This is going to be a brief tutorial on how to use uh, the drawing functions on the POC200. If I press my home button, you'll see that a, you know, a normal screen pops up when you have your open job. One of the easiest ways to just get into editing your drawing is by going to Info and then going to Graph. All right, if I go to Graph, it pulls on my drawing. Now, when you're in an application, let's say you're doing layout or measure and record, if you see this bar on the right side, you know you can still draw on your drawing while you're while you're actually working. It's nice. You can do it right on screen. But if I bring this out, pull this back in, tap the arrow, bring it out, tap it to go back in, that's my functions. Sometimes if you're if you're laying out, you'll have the point list on this side. Right now, because I'm in graph, I don't. So I can actually, you know, have a bigger screen to work with. Anyway, let's get to it. So here's all my drawing functions. Think about this. If you see a black um, item that means that's something that you that you know exists that you need to uh, that you want to add the red. So black is what you have out there. Red is what you want to add. So if you look at this top left corner, we'll start with this one. I want to add a line between two points. So I look in my drawing the two points I need to add a line between. Let's say I want to add between point four over here that I have and uh, CP one right here. I just tap those two points and it adds a line. And I got to press the save button to save it. Done. Voila. Got a line in there. You can do that all, all you want. That's all that. That's all that is. Adding a line between two points that you know. This little button over here is your delete button. As I go, I'm going to delete some things. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that line. And I can delete it by saying save. It's going to ask me. Well, if it's, if it was a point, it would ask me. But yep, I'm going to delete that line. It's gone now. All right. Now let's go to this next one. This is a radius with a known two points and a known radius. Excuse me, this is an arc with a known radius and two points. So, for instance, I have CP1 here and CP4. All right, you can see it automatically pops up a circle. But if I press this little gear here, right here, this little this little gear, right by, by the save button, I can specify the kind of circle I want, and I can specify the way that I want the arc to go. Okay, so let me specify that. Notice I have a lot of directions here. Large left, small left, large right, small right. Okay. What that means, we'll go through it one by one. Large left is what it looks like right now. This is my, this is my first point, CP1, and CP4 is my second. So it goes on the large part of the circle, it gives me my large left arc. All right? But now, let me go to small right, and you'll notice it'll give me my small right side of the arc. Okay? Now, let's say how, I wonder what small left looks like. Ah, small left puts a smaller part of the arc on the left side. And then I guess large right would give us the arc on the right side. All right, that's the way to think about it. Uh, get used to it, but that's that's what it is. But one thing that uh, is funny is like, let's say that I don't, let's say I put the wrong radius in here, like three, three feet between these two points. It's gonna say, nope, can't do that. The math isn't right. And the, they're, all they're saying is that these two points are too far apart to create a, a circle with it that has a three foot radius on it. So I chose six. You should know what that radius is between the two points and it should work just fine. This one is a radius between three points. So if I know that there's three points in here that fall in the same circle, I can just tap those three points. One, so I tap this one, this one over here, and this one. And look at that, a beautiful uh, arc, right? Like, if I wanted to close that circle, this one here that we just created, I just tap that again. Now I'll just tap these three points to give it the arc on the other side. All right. All right. Now I'll go to this other point. Let me delete some of these that I just created, though, because we don't need all this information in there. Delete all that. I'll delete that center point. Don't need that. Okay. So if you ever have a circle or an arc that you need the center point of, which is like similar to how these pipes are in here, all right, let me delete these points so you can see what I mean. I can tap center point of these arcs. And as long as it's an arc, a known arc, it should give you the center point of it. Like that. These might be blocks, which is why it's hard for me to get, but I'm getting the center point of these circles as best I can here. All right. Next is uh, this intersection. Let me zoom out. If I have a line, 
two lines that intersect. This is really common with grid lines, but I'll do I'll do an example down here. Let me zoom in. So I have two lines that intersect. Bam, bam, creates a point right at the intersection, and I can do that for several of them if I do them all multiple at once. Right, it'll give me all the points of those that intersect at once, so I can save them all at one time. This is a line segmentation, so if I zoom out, okay, segmenting lines, I'll just tap a random line. Let me tap this one because we're right here. Okay, see how it selects the line? It's already segmented a little bit, but let's change those parameters a little bit. Let me zoom out so you can see it. Okay, segmented line, all right? Edit that. Do I want to separate by segments or do I want to specify the segment length? For instance, I can say, hey, I want this line to be separated every, uh, well, let me do six inches. That'd be kind of cool. Give me a point every six inches. Okay. Here we go. Every six inches, there's a point. As well as, I believe, it also puts a point at the end of the line as well by default. Yeah. So it starts down here, six inches, six inches, six inches. And up here, it's closer, but it's because there's. it also gives you a point at the very end of the line as well, even though it's not a perfect 6-inch distance. But I can edit that again. I can also specify instead of 6 inches, I just need a number of segments. I want to separate it to 5 equal segments. I say OK. I say OK. Now if you look at it, this is 5 equal segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is really good for, for instance, let me show you this, for arcs, right? If I need to lay out an arc... That's nice. I can just give me give myself points along the arc, and I'm golden. This next one is just your your uh, you can touch and and lay out points as you go. I don't use this very often, but for instance, let me touch this parameter thing. Let's say I want to lay out. I'll look at this side. This is mainly the side that I use, but let's say I want to uh, just kind of touch and go, is what they call it. So I want to lay out the midpoints of everything I touch, the endpoints of everything I touch, right? Let me, let me stick with endpoints because that's the easiest to show. So if I come in here, I say, okay, I want to lay out endpoints. All I got to do now is zoom on in, tap. Got the endpoint there, but notice I don't have the endpoint down here. I have to tap down here to get this one. Okay, so now I have both endpoints. I'll tap over here for that endpoint. I'll tap here for this endpoint. Right? I'll tap the other side to get the other endpoint. So it's a tap and go. Let me go ahead and set these settings up. Let me say midpoints now as well as endpoints. And see how it kind of automatically updated it. So if I tap this end, tap down here, right? I get the midpoint of the line as well. Pretty simple. Uh, that might come in handy, you know, if, if you want to just kind of tap a bunch of points all at once with a lot of different parameters. So if you're not just doing circles, if you're not just doing intersections, if you're not just doing endpoints, you can use that to do it instead. All right. This one is uh, to to. Uh, to automatically add points by layer. So I can specify first off what layer I want to lay out points on. And then on that layer, I can automatically on that layer, give it a point at every single endpoint entity. I don't like to do this because a lot of times the layers, A, I don't know exactly which layer I need to turn on or off. If you do, it might work. Like if you have a grid alone, let me turn off all these layers for instance. I'll just turn on my grid, okay? This might work, okay? So if I zoom over here, you see how I just have my grid left? So instead, I'll say, okay, I'm going to put down, I want it to find the, you know what, what I should do first? Let me delete these points so you can see how it works. One. All right, so I have my grid. Don't get the idea. Let's say I want to have endpoints, midpoints, and intersecting points selected, Okay. So on this on this layer, it's going to put a point at every single endpoint, midpoint, intersection point it finds on this layer. So I'm going to zoom out so you can see it do its its magic. I'm going to say start. Added 15 points automatically. You see that? Went fast. But now let me go back and just show that layer again. S grid. Okay. Look at that. Point, point, midpoint, midpoint, endpoint, intersecting points. Right has them all over. It did it automatically. So that's another way you can do that. Okay. Uh, now let me go ahead and turn that layer back on. All right. So far so good. Again, this is your delete button. You cannot delete, by the way, entities that came in the original drawing. You can never delete that. 
uh, which is good in my opinion. You can only delete, like for instance, I drew this line over here. I can delete that line. I think I drew that line in there. Did I save that as a? Oh, maybe not. But you can delete lines that you've drawn in here and points you've made in here, but you cannot delete anything from the original drawing. So that's good for, I, I think that's a good thing to be honest. This is your point offset. So if I have a line, I'll just have this line here in the drawing. It's gonna say, okay, uh, on this offset, what A, what do you want your offset to be? Let me just give it a smaller offset. I'll give it a one foot offset. And uh, how, uh, how far do you want the first point away from the second point, right? So if I know I have, if I have a uh, 12 foot, if I know that my starting point is gonna be at the base of a line and I need uh, a point offset from that and go up 10 feet or whatever, I can put it like this. Let me just press okay, you can see what it looks like. All right, at this point, these points are now one foot away from the line. And the zero, zero of the line's down here and it gave me a point 10 feet above, above. Let's see what happens if I make that 15, go beyond the line length. It won't put it in there yet. It has to be within the line parameters. All right, I think this is only a 12 foot line. Yeah, 12 foot line. So within the line length, you can say, okay, starting from the zero of the line going up, that's how I want, how, how far apart I want my points to be, and you're good to go. So that's good. You know, if you want to create a quick offset of a line, you just go ahead and tap this, 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 uh, this button, offset that line, save it, and then quickly draw two points, draw a line between those two points, save it, and now you have your offset line. Right, if you, if you need to create an offset. And if you ever need to know how long a line is and uh, you, you don't have two points at the end of it, you can just tap this distance measurement again. Right, This one gives you a distance between two points or you can just tap a line as well. Which one can I tap here? Here we go, let me tap that one. All right, that's a 12 foot line. Tap that one, that's a 12 foot line. I'm not sure why I can't, there we go, that's a 12 foot line. Right, so you can just tap a line, it'll tell you how dis how far apart that line is. So you, you can know when you need to make your endpoints on that line for this, you can quickly tap that in there. Another way to make endpoints, by the way, is you remember the segment button? I'll tap the segment button, I'll tap this one here. And instead of giving it like a bajillion segments, see how I have a lot of segments on there? I'll go to I'll give it just one segment, right? Number of segments, one. Right? One segment of a line is just the two endpoints. And there I have it, right? Done. All right, almost done here. This is your angle, All right? I can select a few points. Let me see, I'll get that one. I'll get 21 and I'll get 15. Let's get a small angle here, All right? And it'll tell you the angle between those points. I don't think you can do it between lines. Just, you can only do it between points. Yeah, I can't tap a line, it's just between two points. This is your area button between points, so if I have these points here, I want to figure out the area. It's one foot squared. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, information. If I want to figure out the information about an object, right, there's a point, the info about it, the northern, eastern, what layer it's on. Or if I want to get info about, let's say, this this line, the layer it's on. What about this line? Information about this line, right, the layer it's on, line length. Pretty cool. And then this is your offset, right? So if I have just one point and I need, and I know exactly how far north I want to take it, so I grab the point, one foot north, I want to make it go one foot east, and if I had a height value, I could add a height value, but now you see, went up one foot, one foot. It's another way to make a quick offset as well. And this last button is your layer button. Like I said, if you know your layers, you can turn them on or off. The drawing is the drawing layers that, you've, that, you, that you imported, and the job layers are the ones that you kind of mess with when you started working with it here. The uh, layers like, like the points are on, for instance, if I have points on S grid layer, right? I have points on the eye wall layer, zero layer, but the drawing is the ones that were imported. This is, comes exactly from AutoCAD. So I hope that helps. I know it's kind of crazy, but I hope that helps.